Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for an intro video to an upcoming series me and Penguin have called Fall of Kerbin. Yes, it is a bit of a prequel to, uh, uh, to Collaborative Warfare, and it's, well, better than the Star Wars prequels, I think. <laughs> but then so was everything. Um, uh, yeah, so this is basically a war series which starts in World War One between just me and Penguin over a much smaller swath of land. Um, which you'll be able to see, uh, and then it'll progress over ten turns into World War Two, and then later World War Two. And today I'm just talking pretty much about the naval battles, and what you can see here is a couple of destroyers going at it. Yes, a couple of early destroyers I have constructed, because we are grouping our um, vehicles properly now. We're going to have air vehicles, land vehicles, uh, supply vehicles, and... And naval vehicles, and yeah, we have some uh, destroyers here. I will be working on bigger ships because we can have destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. But I have just been getting to grips with this mod, which is the World War II warships mod, which is a very important mod. It also has naval artillery system, which provides the guns. But the World War II warships mod, the way of destroying a ship isn't just blowing everything up. It's blowing up enough of this um, outer plating, which is hull plating, because on the bottom of the ship there's a bunch of um, parts which pump in water, and the outer hull plating pumps out water. So when you destroy the hull plate, the outer hull plating, it fills up with water and actually sinks like a real warship. And you can see I'm having a hard time here, I'm getting destroyed, but luckily I didn't design the ship properly, so it's not sinking because the nose doesn't actually work properly. <laughs> um, so that's fine. Uh, I'll have to change that for the real, uh, for the real series. But yes, uh, I apparently have knocked off the bridge because the other destroyer opened fire at me with, um, a flat cannon. Yeah, you can see here. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of let you watch this while I describe um, things. I'm gonna make a bunch of cuts so you can see when I eventually destroy some of these panels. It took me a while to figure out because it's kind of a little hard and I was figuring out where I can actually shoot. But yeah, so um, as I said, there'll be destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. And destroyers can have two um, guns of up to uh, of up to five inches or 12.7 centimeters. So I have this double gun here, which is 10 centimeters, which is a, sl a smaller caliber than I can have, but it is a um, has a higher rate of fire. Oh, and yes, here we are. We've knocked off uh, a panel finally, and you can see up top right, it's filling with water, and this is slowly sinking a bit. But we'll have to destroy more than that to sink it. And destroyers can also have depth charges because there will be submarines which uh, will be invisible on the map, and if they, you get in 10 kilometers of them, you'll be able to see them and and then you'll be able to um, destroy them with depth charges or attempt to. Uh, you can also carry torpedoes on uh, a destroyer, which I don't currently have, um, because I haven't fully made them work yet. Um, and one AA gun, you can see up on the top of the bridge. It's a pretty bad placement, but I've just kind of put it there for now. Um, and then cruisers, you can have four 10 inch guns, um, and you can have uh, 10 secondary batteries, which are the AA guns. Oh, yeah, you can see I've knocked off another panel. It's starting to sink a little more um, after a few cuts there. Uh, uh, it can also have uh, torpedoes and two landing craft or fighter aircraft that can be deployed from the ship, which is pretty cool. The battleships, um, which are really massive, you can have as many turrets as you want with a maximum caliber of 15 inches, which are some serious battle guns. You can see it's taking me a very long time to destroy anything in uh, with my cruiser gun, but with a much bigger gun, this would end a lot quicker. These aren't really battleships, these are destroyers. Um, the uh, battleships can also have as many secondary batteries as you want. And they, can, or they can't carry torpedoes, but you can have up to four landing craft or fighter aircraft. All of these rules will be linked in the description. Um, and aircraft carriers are pretty much just as many aircraft as you can fit onto them. They can also have a maximum of 10 secondary batteries of up to 40 millimeter. But yeah, you can see I've destroyed enough panels now, and this is finally actually sinking after a few things slid off the deck and after a lot of firing and a lot of trying to get this right and a lot of cutting, because this actually took me like 15 minutes. Um, you can see I've actually managed to sink the ship. It won't go down fully, but yeah. So I hope that uh, clears up what uh, the naval battles will be and how awesome all of this will be. Um, and yeah, there will also be aircraft. I'm not doing my full-on aircraft video today, which uh, Penguin has already done, but I thought I'd talk about it a little bit because I'm going to go and bomb that ship to hopefully sink it. What I have here is a strike aircraft, and there are a few rules for um, aircraft, which I might as well explain now. Uh, you can launch... Oh yeah, and by the way, for the ships, you can launch uh, three destroyers or two cruisers or one battleship, or maybe, like, I don't know, one battleship and one uh, destroyer, but, you know. Um, oh no, that would make no sense. One cruiser and one destroyer, but that would be pointless. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um... Yeah, so here we have uh, a strike aircraft. You can have fighters, strike aircraft, and bombers. Apparently in World War II, bombers, not super useful. I can kind of see that. So strike aircraft may be the real thing, and fighters, of course. So we can launch five fighters a turn. Um, th three strike aircraft or one bomber. 
A fighter can have up to, uh, well, can have two 30 caliber machine guns. Um, I may also say 30 millimeter accidentally quite a lot. Uh, but yeah, which uh, Penguin said 50 in his um, video because he didn't know about the 30 millimeter, uh, 30 caliber machine guns in um, uh, in uh, Aviator Arsenal. But 30 caliber, it will be what they'll have. Uh, a strike aircraft like this can carry up to a thousand pounds of bombs. So I have 10 100 pound bombs on here, and I'm going to try and line up. It takes me ages, so I'll just keep talking. And they can have uh, two 30 caliber machine guns. Or uh, a and uh, a tail gun, currently a 30 millimeter tail gun, which is super deadly and will take anything apart. So that will be replaced at some point because that would be so unrealistic, it's uh, crazy. I actually end up sinking that ship with that 30 millimeter machine gun later. And bombers can carry up to 3,000 pounds of bombs, can have pretty much anything and 3,000 pounds of bombs. Um, and there are, and basically, fighters and strike aircraft can have these engines. There's also a slightly different engine of this, which I'll run through with Penguin. It looks slightly better, and you don't have to thrust limit it, and it has a better fuel efficiency. But yeah, um, this it can have this engine, which is very powerful, uh, on 50% thrust for a fighter, 60% thrust for this, and you can have multiple engines on a bomber. So yes, we're going to uh, try and line up again, but here you'll notice that when I try and bomb, I hit change weapon rather than um, drop bombs. So it, I just flick through weapons and I'm like, god damn. But yes, that is that. Um, so that is fighter rules. There's also tank rules, um, which I might as well uh, explain. There will be tanks. Um, they were, they basically... Oh yeah, I'm just changing the rope. I'm so stupid. Yeah, but uh, uh, tanks you can have, basically, I think it's like... Uh, you can launch three light tanks or two medium tanks. I'll explain the tanks a little more in a proper tank video because they're kind of cool. And obviously, we'll, we're progressing through World War One, and then it turned ten. It'll be World War Two, and then I think at turn twenty, it'll be late World War Two with early jets. And because it's just me and Penguin, it will be a much faster, punchier series. And also, we won't have to do big, long drives because we're going to be using vessel mover actually, um, so that we can. Uh, basically, we have set uh, distances currently for the ships and the tanks and things, so that you can move a ship. Um, I think it's like 50 kilometers a turn with Vessel Mover and get rid of a third of its fuel um, and you can do something similar. I think it's 100 kilometers and a third of the fuel with uh, the tanks. Um, oh, and let's just watch this bon bombing run uh, before I explain it. Uh, here we are just coming and I've throttled back, preparing my bombs and I'm going to try and lay them across the deck and hopefully do a little more damage and really send it down to sleep with the fishes. Although it's a ship, not a mafia boss. Uh, so here we are, let's just unleash them! There we go, dropping them away, you can see them falling beneath me. I dropped 9 out of the 10. Um, because I only really had time. You can see the cluster going in, and they land absolutely perfectly. Just lay across the deck, but they are only 100 pound bombs, so they did almost no damage except knocking off the flag. And you can see my flag there! It's a bit American. Penguin's gone very Russian. I've decided, let's go American. I actually do have a fighter emblem, which looks basically exactly the same-ish as the, uh, uh, American fighter emblem, but I've just got the flags on right now. It's uh, it, it's obviously not an American flag. I just I just like the stars and stuff. But I am a little worried um, that because uh, with the American imagery and the kind of style of flag I've gone for, I'm a little worried that it might look like one of the old com uh, Confederate. Uh, wartime flags. Um, I'm not entirely sure that they had a lot of different wartime flags. So if I accidentally make a flag that is involved with slavery, just tell me and I'll change it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, after trying to sync this, I've decided to go, not American today, but Japanese, and kamikaze this mother. So I'm going to fly in, firing my uh, 30 caliber machine guns, doing fuck all, and then I'm just going to try and hit the bridge and bounce right off. <laughs> yeah, it's a very tough ship. Um, but luckily I still have my, um, my, uh, my cannon back here, so I'm going to try and shoot through this. And you can see it really heats up the panels very quickly, so I can actually sink this ship a little bit with this. And this is why we are not using this machine gun. Uh, well, this cannon, actually. Um, oh no, it's a chain gun, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you can see how quickly it's heating this up and would destroy it very quickly. And I think I managed to destroy a panel in a bit. Um, yeah. So what else was that? I was, I was mentioning about, oh yeah, you can move vehicles. And basically you can also send supply uh, vehicles, which will be a little slower. I think they usually have about th uh, two-thirds the range of the actual vehicle. So when you run out of fuel in a ship or a tank, you will have to send a supply vehicle, and you should really be sending a supply vehicle. So you can have a serious war of attrition by just, like, not fighting uh, your enemy, just uh, not fighting your enemy's tanks, but fighting their uh, supply vehicles. So, yeah, you're going to want to be careful with that, really. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, you can see I'm just unloading on this, and I actually think I managed to destroy this panel in a second. Um, which is pretty crazy for the gun on the back of a World War One strike fighter. And yeah, <laughs> there it goes. 
And I get another one, and the ship really starts to go down now, because, <laughs> yeah, so we will have to change that out. But yes, that is uh, some of the rules. The, the rules and the mods, well, the rules will be linked in the description, and if I do forget, it is in the description of Penguin's video. Uh, the mods will all be in the description, you'll probably just have to Google them, and you will find them, because finding all the links will take me a very long time, but if you just Google them, you will find them. Um... And, yeah, we're doing this in 1.1.2, 1 .1 uh, it's pretty much, yeah, I think it's all of the information, really. Um, so, yeah, that should be uh, pretty awesome. I will be doing a proper aircraft video where I talk about all of the stuff. Penguin has already done one on that. I'll also do a tank video at some point, and I'll probably do another uh, follow-up naval video with proper naval battles with maybe some cruisers, an aircraft carrier, maybe maybe a battleship. Oh, and you can see the uh, destroyers finally going down, because destroyers aren't really, well, they're not battleships, are they? I mean, I'm, I'm not much of a naval expert, but I know that much, and I do like aircraft carriers. I even made my uh, girlfriend once watch an aircraft carrier documentary because we just watched P.S. I Love You, and I wanted to see some stuff blow up. Uh, um, although P.S. I Love You is a great film. What am I talking about now? Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. If you do have any questions, ask them in the description. There will be the rules. Uh, ask them in the comments. There will also be the rules more thoroughly. And I think this is going to be a great series. And also, have I shown you the map of the land yet? Probably not. Here's the map of the land. The big dots are big bases. Um, the small dots are small bases. The star is the main base. Oh, I should explain this. Fuck. Okay, so right now I'm in a base that I created. I'm creating all of the bases with the Kerbal Constructs base editor over this la piece of land that you can see on the screen right now. Um, and uh, you, you can see that there's a nice piece of water in between us. There's a land route at the top with mountains in the way, so you have two little passages you can go through. There's a nice little island chain at the bottom. This is the perfect piece of land. Penguin is on the left, I am on the right. Um, I have this top base, and as you could see before, my big naval base is in a lagoon, which is just so great. It's got, like, it's so defensible. I feel a bit bad for taking something so defensible, but it was just too perfect to pass up. But yeah, you can see that this will be a rather nice piece of land, and that little island chain at the bottom will require some navy, but if you can get over there, that's pretty smart. And uh, if you have long enough uh, ranges on your bombers, which probably not in World War One, you could just strike across the ocean. So in World War One, we're probably going to need um, some aircraft carriers, but I think this is just the perfect piece of land. The squares, by the way, those are cities, and those uh, actually provide supply vehicles. Um, so if you bomb supply, if you bomb cities, you can enough, you, basically that's... Uh, Slightly more complicated rule, but you can take out a city, um, and that'll totally take out a, one of the uh, ability, one of the your enemy's abilities to launch supply missions. So I think that's really cool um, because, well, yeah, I think you can launch like three supply missions either for tanks or planes, a turn or maybe two. I've sort of forgotten. There's a lot of rules. Penguin has come up with most of them. Uh, but yeah, so that is awesome. I am creating the bases. The one you saw today was a big base. I didn't really look at it properly, but I'll probably look at them a little more. I'm also <clears throat> working on various other small bases and various things. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that all in the future, in future episodes. But I hope you'll come back for more of these intro videos where I'll explain everything. And Penguin is also doing the same, but he's on holiday right now. So uh, maybe I'll probably just put out more just to kind of explain everything. And then after Space Race is over, this series will happen. And I think it's going to be amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Care Through the Tape. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.